We're being told that we have this polymer. It's heated in an oven. So another way to write that during the exam is that um, is that you have the polymer and it's heated in the oven. So polymer plus energy, and it leads to this uh, shrinkage that, that you know they're talking about. So the, what do we know? We know that we added energy. That everyone can agree with and therefore as you've written it is an endothermic reaction. Exo means exit energy exits the reaction it's given off and exothermic reaction has by definition a negative delta H okay so endothermic reaction uh, which we know this is means that the H um, is positive so without question, okay, oh, what's happening with my text? Anyway, I don't know. Okay. Without question, we know that um, the, the hydrogen is positive. Okay, so H in the equation is positive. Let's move on to uh, another issue. Uh, T, the temperature. Can the temperature be negative? Is it possible that the temperature, which is in degrees Kelvin, can it be negative? Temperature in Kelvin, can it ever be negative? No. Exactly. So, let's see what we have so far. Because, uh, j just for those of you who, who have no science background, Zero Kelvin is called the absolute zero. It's the lowest temperature can ever be in the universe. It has never been achieved. Um, uh, scientists have been able to come close to it, but, but never actually get to uh, absolute zero. But the idea of negative Kelvin is impossible. And the relationship with Kelvin and, and uh, degrees Celsius is 273, but they would always give you that uh, information. Yes. Particles would stop completely. So, um, so temperature is always positive. Now, wait a second. They said that it quickly shrinks. Quickly shrinks. Does that mean that the reaction is spontaneous or not spontaneous? Quickly shrinks. Is that spontaneous? Or not spontaneous. Yeah, I think that it's spontaneous. And if it's spontaneous reaction, what is what is the sign for delta G? Absolutely. So, and this is uh, this is what you are expected to know. You're expected to know endothermic is positive. Temperature. Uh, in Kelvin must always be positive. Delta G in a spontaneous reaction is negative. If it's not spontaneous, it's positive. And if delta G is zero, it is in equilibrium. That information you're expected to know. So this reaction is, is spontaneous. It is, it is negative here. Okay, um, let's see if I can write that. So I've got, I've got negative, yes, I can. and that's equal to positive minus um, something that is positive. Okay. So, you tell me, does the entropy, S, just look at the reaction, for G to be negative, the entropy, S, has to be positive or negative? <laughs> okay, before you, you ask me about the chemistry, just deal with the math. <laughs> 
because this math is, you know, this is basic high school math. You're right. S has to be positive because if it was negative, it would, it would make this whole thing on the right-hand side positive. The only possible way that G can be negative is if S is positive, and that's the math. Okay, so now we have to go back in our heads because, of course, it's uncomfortable. I know, because you're used to hearing when things expand, you go from liquid, which is organized, to vapor, which is disorganized and going all over the room, bouncing off the walls of the, of, of the room and so on. That means that entropy is increasing. When you expand, entropy is increasing. So how on earth can randomness be increasing, as you're asking, when you have something shrinking? It, it doesn't make sense. Well, first of all, you have to accept the math. And once you look at the math, it's very clear what's happening. And so you're forced to say it. Then you have to reevaluate what's happening here. And so let me, let me put it this, this way to you. If you had rubber, because this is a polymer, a polyethene, so let's imagine that you have rubber and it's bouncing up and down. Now, if you imagine the molecules inside of the rubber, they're probably organized in some kind of way to permit the rubber to bounce, right? Now, let's say that you put it in the oven and melted it. Do you think that those molecules will become more organized or less organized? <laughs> So I guess I guess it's a it's a it's a yeah it would become more disorganized as you yes it did shrink but this is this is an exception <laughs> this is an exception to what you're used to thinking of in that um, uh, shrinking wouldn't mean that it's it becomes more organized so uh, there it is but it's it's proven with the math okay so um, oh yes. Yes, I should say something else about this. I do want to underline some, some, another point about this. Some students think, erroneously, that uh, if you have a spontaneous reaction, it means that delta H is negative. This question proves it's not true. You don't have to have a negative delta H in order to have spontaneous reaction. By definition, Spontaneous reaction means negative delta G. It does not necessarily mean delta, negative delta H, though often you see it being negative. But here's a perfect example that delta H is positive in a spontaneous reaction. Okay, question 43. Please take a look at 43. See if you can come up with the answer. That's correct. Crystallization indicates less randomness and therefore S, which is for entropy, a measure of randomness, would be negative. Okay, so in this reaction we have crystals dissolved in water, a drop in temperature. So dissolved in water, I put water plus crystals, drop in temperature means that there's more energy on the left-hand side of the equation compared to the right-hand side of the equation. So more energy on the left than the right. So I put energy on the left. So I, I, I'm, I'm interpreting a drop in temperature as meaning energy added, meaning that the forward reaction is endothermic. Okay? Um, so that's the forward reaction. I'm just going to deal with the forward reaction for a second. S will be positive, as written. As written, this is an endothermic reaction, so H will be positive, as written. So this is the forward reaction. Uh, a decrease, um, why does a decrease in temperature mean endothermic? Well, I think you would agree with this question. If you have a decrease in temperature, which side has more energy, the reactant side or the product side? Which side has more energy if you have a decrease in temperature during a reaction? 
it has to be the reactant. The reactant side has to have more energy. No, because if you have if you have more energy on the product side, you released energy exothermic. I know you're not used to hearing de decrease in temperature, and that's why they wrote it, because you're not used to hearing it. But then you have to interpret what this decrease in temperature mean. Lower temperature means a loss of energy. There's less energy. So then put energy on the uh, side with the reactants, and then it's easier to interpret. And then when you look at this reaction, uh, entropy will be positive because we have crystals which are organized go into solution which is liquid which means that those atoms or, or molecules are moving around the solution randomly they're bouncing off of water molecules they're bouncing off the walls so before they were organized crystals now they're not so entropy increased h will be positive because it's an endothermic reaction uh, just like we just saw so s and h are both positive in the ford reaction However, the question is saying, predict the signs of S and H when potassium nitrate is crystallized from aqueous solution, which is saying, <laughs> now that you worked out what would happen in the reaction, what would happen in the opposite reaction? That's what they just asked. So instead of S and H being positive, S and H will both be negative, um, and so the answer would be D.